Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Electrolyte. This is wiring part two. Continuing on with uh, the low voltage wiring. These are uh, some of the wire harnesses that are coming from the trunk, um, passing through into the back seat in order to wire the back of this uh, relay and fuse module. These wires are um, initially a little bit too long, so I kind of loop them around and, and route them uh, to make them as clean as possible, uh, documenting as I go, um, making lots of changes uh, in real time, but eventually it starts to come together, just crimping on each of these uh, bare terminals. And once you start looping the wires around, um, I decided to add these terminal blocks. Even though there's a lot of duplicate power and switched power and ground, uh, it just makes it clean and you can disconnect or test one circuit at a time uh, so it makes uh, not only building but rebuilding or testing uh, very simple and this was just a great location for this because I had all this real estate um, I used the back of that panel for a lot of other wiring so might as well use both sides and it's uh, protected behind the rear seat and also easy to get to if I need it this is the uh, battery distribution so the top connection goes to the battery and then we have the charger from the DC-DC converter and then an output to the uh, power distribution module. And a look at building the uh, front harness. This uh, runs all the lights in the front and the horn, fans. Um, all these wires are run under the uh, fender well to keep the engine bay clean or the former engine bay clean. And once they're all routed, you can clean it up with uh, sleeves and corrugated tubing. Some of the connections needed to have, uh, they had to be disconnected, so I used these Deutsch connectors. Um, really nice terminals, they crimp on with a kind of a radial style crimper, and then they push into the uh, connectors. Uh, the connectors are weather tight, easy to use, real clean look. This is the uh, rear harness that goes behind the bumper. Uh, it's actually attached to the bumper, so you have to be able to disconnect it in order to get the bumper off and then get the taillights out. So here it is all installed with uh, new reproduction taillights, which uh, I always like the look of new plastic on, on a restored car. It really cleans it up. And this is a look at the other end of the wire. So this is the connector that's going to go into the race pack smart wire. Um, most of these I made a couple are factory smart wire, um, but I ended up redoing most of the wiring they did just because of the circuits I wanted. This is one of two connectors uh, up under the dash on the left side of the steering wheel. Left enough room here to work on it, whether I needed to add or uh, change wires. Um, some of them I was able to do it uh, kind of on the bench, some I had to do underneath the dash here, but there's plenty of room. You can see the main power lug is in the center of that smart wire. And once everything's installed, then you can start programming all the outputs. Uh, some of the outputs are based on the input, uh, like a constant on when you turn your headlights on or in this case this is the flasher that's going to feed uh, the steering column to run all the flasher functions from hazards and turn signals. So the wiring is uh, pretty well underway about 90 percent I'd say uh, but I still have some components to install so I'm back to uh, fabricating brackets. This is the submerged high voltage battery heater so it's a heat element that will be in line in the battery coolant loop um, so when it's heating, it will bypass the radiator, bring the batteries up to temperature. Once they're at a preset temp, it'll uh, shut it back down. And that'll be all programmed in the smart wire. So this is how I like to make brackets. Um, zero kerf line um, kind of cuts to make the bends. Uh, I was able to bend the tabs here for mounting the heater and then bent up some gussets. Um, and then it'll be rib nutted down into the inner fender. This is the vacuum pump uh, bracket. I needed it kind of at an angle to route the uh, output the way I needed it. I built in some gussets here and then it's uh, mounted to the inner fender as well. This was trial one. Uh, I had to add one more tab for the uh, vacuum switch which I forgot on this one. It's all isolated so it should be fairly quiet. And then this is just a handmade bracket for the uh, three-way valve. This is also a Tesla part that uh, will control the fluid either straight return or from the radiator as you see here. So this is the bottom of the radiator feeding that three-way valve. 
if the batteries are uh, in the mode where it has to pass through the radiator, it'll hit this valve and then into the pump. Uh, the little fitting off to the left would be just a straight through bypassing the radiator. Uh, and that's how it would be when you're heating. You'd bypass the radiator straight through back to the heater. Look at the uh, rubber isolated mount. This is a factory Tesla mount and pump and it's just bolted into my lower subframe. Then I got into uh, running some of the coolant hoses. I quickly learned I needed a better way to do this. Um, so I fired up a 3D printer and started uh, learning how to use this thing. I'm new at 3D printing, but I really see the benefit, especially on some of the small parts I'll be working with. Uh, I started out fairly easy with just a flat speaker adapter. This is printed in PETG and uh, five millimeters thick. I think it's about 25% infill. And it's just to get me from a four by 10 uh, down to two, three and a half inch speakers for my dash. While the windshield is out, this is the best time to get to this. So um, I'm not sure exactly what kind of stereo I'm gonna have, but I wanted to get these squared away uh, while the time was right. But they fit nice and snug and um, should be a good, good way to go. Uh, this is printed with TPU. This is the grommet for the heater core. Uh, I had kind of a big opening here because I had heater hoses. Now it's just got the little wires being the uh, electric core. And this is what I come up, came up with to uh, grommet and mount the hoses and uh, heavy gauge wires. So this is a zip tie hose and wire uh, mount. It's got a screw down the center and then a channel that you feed a zip tie through. So once it's mounted, you can just kind of snap the hose or wire into it, zip tie it shut, and it's uh, nice and secure, and it's got a nice grommet around it to protect the, the hose or wire. I just made them all the same size, but they're really designed for the double lot wire here. This is uh, zip tight, and you can see it made a full grommet all the way around. This is a flexible material, very secure, very strong. And then this is a look at the, uh, the initial routing of the hoses. That's kind of a three by three side-by-side -side version of that with two two bolts to mount it and it just makes it easy to organize everything and then uh, for the second coolant pump the Tesla pump the lower um, mounting isolator didn't work for me so I printed one again out of the rubberized material so that it had a mounting point at a, a 90 degree angle from the other one and worked out really well uh, fits nice and snug it's just a press fit and while I was going, uh, these are the fender turn signal indicators that Mopars have. Um, one of mine was broken and the other one was missing, so I just printed these out of a clear PETG and I uh, glued a 5mm LED up into them, so kind of a different look. Um, you can see it from all sides now when the, when the turn signals come on. And then while I had that material loaded, I made some uh, license plate clips here. This clips onto the lower grill so I can mount the license plate directly to it. Um, that took the place of about a four or five pound metal bracket that was kind of gaudy. Uh, this is a, a lot cleaner look since I need a front license plate. And there it is. Uh, my upper grill just shipped. It was on back order for a long time, so I'll be getting the front bumper um, painted and the grill installed, so things are going pretty smooth. Uh, I started working on my vacuum system. Um, I was missing a fitting, so I pulled this one out of the McMaster car catalog, printed it up, and started testing my vacuum system. So another good use of that printer is to have uh, an instant part when you need it. Uh, this will end up being brass, but it did the job for now. Uh, it turns out I needed a new vacuum booster, uh, which was a different size from the original, so uh, I've got the new booster installed here. I had to redo the brake lines, um, but everything turned out pretty good. I've got my uh, brake pressure transducer for the regen and the uh, line lock. Everything's installed. All the wires are routed and terminated. And, um, it's really coming along now. These are the wires. I, I mounted these pumps so the wiring would be easier. I routed the wires in the same harness. So these are the two Tesla pumps that will run at different times, but um, or uh, under different uh, logic anyway. And the start button is underneath the dash pad here, kind of uh, if you reach your right arm around the back of the steering wheel, you can see the chrome button there. You just kind of hit it with your thumb. Um, 
it was a nice easy place to mount it. I think it's going to work out well. And that's it for this episode. Hopefully next time I'll be assembling some of the battery boxes with the high voltage wire and some of the plumbing. Hit me up with comments or questions. I appreciate all the input uh, and the discussion. We'll see you next time.